This is just me waxing poetic about one color for half of the video. What is up guys, welcome back. Welcome to the Gucci video. So in my last Sephora haul, like my last Sephora sale video, I talked about how I was investing in a bunch of luxury brands to really get my head around them. We covered Tom Ford, we covered Chanel, we've done some Dior, but I have been really sitting on this video for a while. And it turns out that what I really needed in order to complete my opinion of the collection as it exists right now was to try one of their lipsticks. So today I have their bronzer, the, what do they call this? Like the, someone called this like the grandma's pillbox <laughs> eyeshadow palette. So I have the eyeshadow palette here. I did buy one of the lipsticks and I also have the Fluid Debuté, the foundation. And I have had the chance to use these now for a long time with the exception of the lipstick that I just got. So I have some very strong opinions that I've formed, very firm opinions. I shouldn't say that they're like extreme or anything, but like I feel very convicted in my opinions and I'm going to compare some of the products to other formulas in my collection as I always do, but I think it's gonna be extra valuable in this case because there is always this expectation around luxury beauty where you're like, well, yes, I do understand that I'm paying for the label and I'm paying for this really exquisite packaging that I'm interacting with. The button on my exquisite sleeve keeps hooking itself on my exquisite bow here. This is not Gucci, this is Selkie, but like it felt very Alessandro to me and so I just, I was drawn to it. Anyway, I did find some drawbacks in some of these formulas and I have products in mind that are less expensive in almost every case I wanna say that I would recommend ahead of these that kind of, in Hannah's words, dupe the vibes. So I'm gonna move you guys in. We're gonna put all of this on my face. We're going to chat about my experiences with them. But this will be a satisfying video also because there is a good beginning, middle, and end. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, let's start with the Fluid Debuté. I got this in the shade 130W. This was me looking at the swatches online and thinking, okay, they seem to lean a little bit more neutral to cool, so I'm gonna go W and hopefully split the difference kind of thing. And I don't mind the shade. I do kind of mind the formula. First of all, I should say all of Gucci stuff, I mean, I don't think the eyeshadows are, but everything else has the Gucci smell to it, that fragrance. And in some cases, it doesn't bother me at all. And in other cases, it bothers me un poco. And in this case, it really doesn't bother me. The only thing that really bothers me here is as they put out this humongous shade range of this Fluid Debuté, their foundation, I was so, so excited. And then I got it in my hands and I was like, it's really mad. <laughs> and so I have used today Glow Screen from Super Goop as my sunscreen, as well as something that I never do, which is I have used the after Bomb from Glossier as my moisturizer today, just because I know that this is going to need extra moisture and usually that After Bomb from Glossier really takes away from wear time, but in this case, I just feel like it's what's going to make this spread out to a level of coverage that I actually wanna wear because it can get really, really like cakey looking and also give it a finish that I like because it really wants to be matte. I will double check on what the actual claim on the finish is because that's gorgeous, but that's not the typical appearance of it. I have really over moisturized in order to get it to look like that. It does build really nicely because it does kind of have more of a satin skin finish. So I'll show you maybe to the detriment of this look, but just try and kind of build it a little bit on my, on my blemishes here and maybe under my eyes just a touch because I find that there's something about this that as soon as I get it, I don't know, where I think I like it, I kind of glance at it a moment later and it looks like it's sort of dragging my face down. I don't really know how else to put it, but the foundation that I would recommend instead, especially for what it's kind of going for, which I think is a more skin finish, but also like a little bit more perfected, blurred, uh, maybe on the side of satin matte kind of uh, finish is something like Fenty Eavesdrop. 
I put this on next to it and they're very, very similar in shade on me. So it was a very easy comparison. Slightly less coverage here, but I really sheared the Gucci out to try and mimic it. And an hour later, this looked lifted and the Gucci side looked kind of dragged down. I'm almost 35. My skin can look very, very different depending on the level of hydration that I have dedicated to my skin that day and the products that I used. And so something about the Gucci just didn't do me as many favors as that Fenty did. And a lot of people don't love the Fenty. I totally understand. But for what they're going for, I feel like they are fairly similar. They're at least comparable. And I would recommend the Fenty over this, especially for the price. Okay, so the Gucci Fluid de Beauté is $68 and they are claiming that it is a natural finish medium coverage, which is I think what they claim on the Fenty as well. So medium coverage, yes, in that it is not full coverage, but it's not medium coverage in the sense of like NARS light reflecting foundation. It says it's for normal combination and oily, so it's not technically for dry skin, not recommended for dry skin, and I do have dry skin. That makes sense to me because it does really, really, really want to like mattify and dry out on my skin if I don't go the extra 10 miles for hydration. That story checks out. $68, I wanna say there are like 40, 50 shades or something. It's something crazy. It's 40, it's 40 shades. So that's phenomenal. Alrighty, so I'm gonna use my Bare Minerals concealer today. I have just found that it really works well with this finish and it is an ideal kind of coverage level for what I'm going for here, which is, you know, a natural meets perfected. We're not going for a no makeup makeup look, but I'm also not going for full beat. I'm really going for dystopian cowgirl fortune teller, which is what this shirt is giving anyway. The foundation is not like my perfect shade. I will say that, like I know it's gonna even out and everything, but I would say if you have my skin tone and this is something that you're interested in, 130W is still a little bit yellow. I should have gone neutral, that's all especially with freaking 40 shades. I could have gotten a perfect match, but I've had it for so long, like I'm not gonna go trade it out now, who cares? Let me do some contour and powder real quick because the next thing we're going to go in with is this bronzer. Okay, so I have here the Eclat Soleil in 01, the bronzing powder, and this is my favorite packaging out of everything that I have. Like, they're all really beautiful, but this color speaks straight to my soul. I don't know what it is about it. It's just so pleasant. And the combination of this color with gold is also really nice. My child is a Libra magpie to his core. And it's like this, this from Byredo and this from Olivia Palermo and the lipsticks from Olivia Palermo and my House of Siage lipstick case. Like those are the ones that he always, what is that? It's a fluff. Wants to reach for and play with. And those are the ones that I least want him to reach for and play with. And so I have to keep them out of sight, but he has impeccable taste. This is an absolutely gorgeous package. I can't really tell like what's metal and what's plastic here. I think some of it might be metal, but some of it, I don't know. Either way, it is really, really nice. There's no clasp. It just opens like that. And then this lifts up. I thought when I saw it online that that meant it was a removable, replaceable pan so that you could kind of keep the packaging. Whoops. But what it really is, is a little locket for their brush that you can see I've made lots and lots of use of. But I do absolutely adore this color. I really, really like it. I will say it's a little bit uh, saturated, you know, uh, pigmentation wise. It definitely has the risk of being too much. So we're just going to be really gentle here. But I say that like, it's not like it's gonna be too much in terms of the color, it just can be too much product on the skin all at once. The color on me is so lovely because it's much rosier. So it's almost a bronzer blush. So much rosier than most bronzers that I've found. So I do end up reaching for this quite a bit. This one is quite strongly fragranced. I don't mind the Gucci fragrance, especially on my cheeks, you know? And I don't feel like it lingers too much. It's more of an experience while you're using it. I always compare it to like the most extreme fragrance to me, which is the Butter Bronzer from Physician's Formula. Like that thing 
if you own it. Your entire makeup collection, nay, your entire makeup room, wherever you keep it, your bathroom, what have you, is gonna smell like that coconut scent. It is so strong. Even like some of the Too Faced stuff, I feel like, you know, it's like it's so chocolatey or whatever. It's still nothing in comparison to that butter bronzer. So this is not like that, you know? But it can get a little bit muddy, especially when you're not working on a completely mattified surface. And I usually am not. I like a hybrid texture on my skin. I like everything to look really healthy and hydrated. And sometimes that requires a little bit of extra finesse because this particular bronzer, as absolutely beautiful and blurring as it is, I just want you to be forewarned. It is not going to be one of those mindless things as you're putting it on. All right, before we do blush or anything, let's go ahead and move into the eyeshadow palette here. So this is just called the eyeshadows in satin, matte and metallic finishes, floral 01. I don't know if they had other ones before this, but this is the only eyeshadow palette I saw available, like at least it looks like this. And it comes with 12 shades of these pretty small pans. It's very precious. This does pop out and you can, you know, basically just replace this unit. And then if you, you know, if this is your only eyeshadow palette and you work your way all the way through it kind of thing and keep this lovely tin, they might put out other color stories and stuff like that. But as this exists currently, it is across the board. We have what I would honestly compare to an Aether Rose Quartz story, an Aether Summer Solstice story, and then an Aether uh, Moonlight story, right? Like, it's basically three quads. And I have found, and I'm gonna go ahead and spoil this, these formulas behave a lot like Aether, but not as well as Aether. If one of these quads resonates more with you than others, I would highly recommend going Aether. Like for me, what really resonates here is kind of the cooler tones and the browns. And for me, that is Rose Quartz. So this is the new Rose Quartz and you can see it doesn't have like a black or like a, even a really dark brown in it. And it also doesn't have that really rich kind of clay red, but everything else I feel like is very, very, you know, duping the vibes as it were and i did do a side by side looking kind of the cool toned pinks in this palette and browns and i was able to make something that looked virtually identical side to side between the two palettes hey dudes so after i filmed this yesterday i went to the mall and i was swatching some shadows i was like in bloomingdale's and i came across a mac eyeshadow called last dance that when i swatched it it looked identical to this gucci shadow and like the um the duochrome the pink duochrome that basically you see is the topper on one of my eyes the one that's labeled <laughs> in the insert and it's kind of the difference to me between the two eye looks so if that's the shadow in the whole color story that you're really drawn to i would recommend that one and or i mean this they're virtually identical honestly yes to sequins last dance yes to sequins from mac um if you go on Timtalia, she has um compared both of them side by side and they're just like super 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 similar and you know a mac shadow can be had for around 20 dollars versus 149 dollars for this palette if you have other things in your collection so if you are really aiming to dupe the vibes and like that's the one thing that you're really crushing on and that you're missing from your repertoire then either of those works literally just as well. But the Aether blended so much better. And they're very, very similar in terms of pigmentation. I feel like they build at the same rate, but the Aether is going to blend more easily. It's just a more effortless formula. So I am gonna work only in this one, just so that you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. And since I have footage of a more cool toned look using kind of the pinks and the browns, I am going to lean a little bit more towards like this being the focal point, this kind of rich rust color today. So the the way that I would typically do this is just kind of start with like a transition shade, right? And go ahead and like get a matte going everywhere. And while these aren't as good and as easy as Aether, which the reason I'm comparing them to Aether is both the color story and because the form, like the formulas immediately remind me of Aether. They're just not quite as good. But that doesn't mean that they're bad. I don't think that this is a bad formula. I've just tried better. And if what's worth it to you is 
not just the formula, but also this being a really unique color story. Like it's a funky combo. And also the gorgeous packaging, if that's something that enriches your day to day by reaching for that, you know, I don't, I don't object to that at all. It's $149. It's a really expensive eyeshadow palette. I just want to like save you a buck if you're quibbling between them and you're like, that packaging doesn't mean that much to me kind of thing. That's so much money. That's so much, that's even more than a Pat McGrath palette. And I, I mean, it's just, a, it's a whole different world. That's an artistry palette in terms of the formula. They're going to be things that like are wapow at a distance. They blend themselves basically, but it's also full of really, really rich textures. This is not really playing as much with texture. You have a lot of mattes, a couple of like duo chromey shimmers, and then just sort of a few satins. But the rest of it, it, like it's, there's no one here trying to be like, yes, and this is your glitter topper, or here is your like blinding highlight, or here is your like trichrome, wild, um, utopian dream type shift. That's not really what most luxury brands, like these legacy fashion brands that are putting out makeup, are going for. Usually they're going for something that's, you know, maybe in Gucci's case a little bit more artsy in feel, but the formulas are just going to be a little more tame because they're trying to appeal to kind of a wider audience, I feel like, in a more like old fashioned expectation of what an eyeshadow formula should be. And that tends to be a little bit more buildable and not quite so like swatchable, <laughs> you know? They're not trying to sell to that like Instagram, TikTok audience quite as their like first audience, but you can see like I'm able to build that. It just takes about twice as long as building it with Aether. That's all, you know, like the Aether just goes on a little more consistent, consistently and ends up blending a little bit more quickly, but this builds just as well. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with that. Actually, I'm going to do it on a brush still. I'm going to go in with that rust color all over my lid. And that's going to be the focal point of our look. So you can see since my eyes are still tacky from not really powdering them, like that sticks pretty nicely. I can kind of just swipe it on with a fluffy brush and I don't get like really any fallout. It is a finely milled formula. It does feel a little bit like it started as a pressed pigment and they like loosened it just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it's got a little bit more like kick up to it, but by no means a like a Anastasia eyeshadow or something where you can basically like dig your brush all the way through it or like blend it away. Now I do really, really love, like once you get the mattes on, they have a really lovely finish, very smoothing, very blurring. And to me that says, I will work on many, many skin maturities <laughs> because it's going to kind of pleasantly reflect, re reflect, refract light in a way that does you some favors and kind of, you know, blurs the edges a little bit, but it's not reflecting light in a way that accentuates texture. It's just like, I call that minerality, the way that it has just like a soft sheen. And it also took me a minute to kind of get my head around this color story because kind of like Pat McGrath in the sense that like there are so many different colors in here that you feel this weird urge to like use all of them at once. And it takes some time to say, okay, you know what? Today I'm going to concentrate on this color story and I'm not going to try to like flatter this palette, Fla flatter its sensibility of like, oh, you included this color and therefore I should use it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go in with this white and it is white. I like having a white in a palette and this white is wow. It is wow. It is definitely a mixer like that's effective. It pulls its weight, you know? So you could base your entire eye with that, but there's also a black. You could base your entire eye with that too. But the opacity on the white is awesome. It's not immediately a super, super approachable color story, but when you start thinking about it in terms of like, what colors would I include if I were willing to mix to get wherever I wanted to go? It really has a lot of potential. And look at, look at how it blends on the skin after the fact, like after you've put it down. That's a big thing for me is like not really having to be perfect in my initial application and still being able to clean it up afterwards. So that's a plus. All right, I'm gonna take that rusty shade. I'm gonna take it on this itty bitty brush here. This is a 204 from BK. And that's also going to go under here. I love this color. I love it. But 
it's something that's very present in a lot of palettes, just like a really beautiful rusty red. You know, it's a very pumpkin spice kind of color. It was very popular for many years and it's still a cornerstone in a lot of color stories, not only because of that, but also because I feel like it looks good on people. It's a dramatic color that tends to look good on a lot of skin tones. So I swiped it on with a fluffy brush initially and it gave me a really nice wash and now I'm kind of building a little more saturation, but it really allows for it. Stays a little sticky, which is really nice. I'm gonna take the 18 brush here from Sephora and I'm going to use that really nice cool oyster beige. And I'm just gonna kinda fill this out right out here. I do feel like I'm getting it lower. It's not fallout, it's just me being a slob. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, and we're just getting this really cool like grungy. I, I just, I like the texture that it leaves on my skin. It just takes a little longer to get there than I expected it to. And I think that that also speaks again to that like luxury eyeshadow formula, the legacy luxury brands. They're just not what you expect if all you've been dealing with is like makeup artist owned, really, really like punchy, swatchy brands. I am coining the term swatchy. It's the brands that sell on swatches. I'm gonna take that same 18 brush and we're going to use that white. I've basically only used mattes thus far. Yeah, yep. So that's my inner corner. And I'm going to go in with this plum shade right here on a Wayne Goss 04. And that's what I'm gonna do, just a really, really soft outer V with. Get a little bit of dimension, but it is, it's just satiny, so it's not going to build any kind of glitter in my crease. And I really only have to touch it. It's not like Hindash's palette where like you can really just aggressively dig a brush in and there's not gonna be any fallout. This does behave more like a, you know, traditional formula. But I do like that you can kind of, you can kind of scrub. You know what I mean? Like you can really scrub the brush and it just continues to blend in a really nice way. I'm going to build even more of that right at the lash line. Get a nice shadow there. I just find that that always makes for a really, easy backdrop for my eyeliner so that my eyeliner doesn't look really, really high contrast. A little bit of the brown, I guess, and just... And then, you know, we have to use a shimmer. It's a review, you know, we have to use one of them and basically there are two. There's this crazy blast of blue, <laughs> which would completely change this eye look entirely. And, you know, maybe some someday we'll do that, but like we've done that plenty of times. I know what it does. <laughs> and I feel like we're kind of chasing a feeling right now. And this one right here is the only one that's kind of a duochrome in the whole palette. It is a pink shift orange kind of, or like a pink shift peach, but it's like a cool pink. Do you see? And that's, that was what rung Aether in my brain. I was like, okay, I'm gonna pull out my Aether palettes and see if I can kind of match this shade because this is a very Aether kind of shift. So this one does have a glitter kind of finish to it. Like I shouldn't say glitter. Since it's a duochrome, you can see the shimmery particles more so than in those satin formulas, you know, see? Like it's not boy tears, but it is excitement. And I'll put a little bit of that underneath my eyes too. It really picks up well on a brush. Like it's a little bit crumblier of a formula. I'm not sure how well it would travel, but it does stick to a brush nicely, which is more than I can say for a lot of like duo crumbs like this. I also really like the kind of funky, Mm, satin taupe that's in here. It is so cool toned. It's wild. Like you can build an entire eye look just around that, but it pulls very cool. Like weathered woods, phytosurgeons kind of cool. Yeah, it's the most like chilled cherry. So there's chilled cherry and there is the Gucci like taupe color. So good to know. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna do what I always do. You guys enjoy the music. I'm going to do my eyeliner, my mascara, and my brows, and then we're gonna come back and talk about this here lipstick. Oh yeah, and I'll put some blush on.
I did obsess about blending between the two eyes, but like what we arrived at, I am obsessed with. It's so beautiful. But again, I hope that I'm imparting in some sense, like my experience working with these, because it took me kind of a while to get here as to the decisions around the eyeshadows in this palette, because there were a lot of choices I decided not to make. Keeping it simple is definitely my advice with this palette because it does go so warm and so cool that you can make something really ugly if you're not careful. And I don't mean if you're not like great at makeup because I don't think I'm great at makeup. I'm saying if you're not careful, sometimes these colors just don't do what you think they're gonna do. And it is truly just practice that has gotten me to a point where like I know which colors go with each other, you know? And I, I could totally see somebody else being like, nope, this was the easiest palette in the world for me, but like, my skin tone, everything shows up so much and everything is so contrasty against my skin tone. I have gotten myself in over my head with that palette many times, many, many times. So anyway, we have a tiny blush and I hardly feel like I even need it. And I know that that is such a crazy thing for me to say because I am such a blush queen, but I think that we will just go in with like, not even flirtatious. I want to go in with like Nymphette from, uh, from Pat McGrath. Like I still want to stay in this neutral tone, but I still, I like the sort of way that that's going to pull from the pink on my eyes. Oh my heavens. Oh, I can't, I can't do it because my lashes aren't dry yet. I can't sneeze. Oh boy. Anyway. Yep, Nymphette is like that perfect neutral. It's like a, a muted fuchsia that shifts slightly gold. It's very luxurious looking. This is like one of those looks that you don't wanna like overdo it in any spot. You know, like I don't wanna go throw glitter on top of this because it's like everything has its own reason to be noticed. I'm so tired of feeling like crap, man. All right, get a little blown out brow moment going here. Now we get to talk about my most recent addition to this little capsule, and that is the Gucci Rouge à l'Or Satin. So this is the satin one in Lorna Dune, D-U-N-E, not D-O-O-N-E, like the shortbread cookie, but I think that that was kind of what they were playing on. Are you guys ready for this? I opened this up and I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> so it does have the little Gucci, you know, carved into the front of it, which is really cute. And the packaging is very, very pretty and heavy and whatnot, you know. There's lots of pretty lipstick packages out there. I'm not enchanted. What I am enchanted with is this color. It's off the charts. can't stop putting it on. You guys know probably if you've watched my channel for a while that when there's this much on my face everywhere else, the chances of me putting on a lipstick, like 0% chance. Because my lips so easily overwhelm everything else on my face. They're bigger than everything else and for some reason I just keep accentuating them. But this color right here, guys, that is just, that's just it, okay? It's, oh my God, it's like, Lavin gray <laughs> and it just mutes my lips out without completely hiding them. It's not like a concealer lip It's like a contour lip. You know what I mean? Like ah, oh, it's like the perfect Cool pink beige. I didn't put on a lip liner with it. I didn't feel like I needed to I didn't even blend it with my fingers I didn't feel like I needed to I was talking about a beginning middle and end Okay, the beginning was me having trouble with these formulas the middle was me trying them out for long enough that I managed to like hack them and get them to look really beautiful and be really cooperative. The end, the happy ending, would be this freaking lipstick that I just got. And it, oh my God, it's mind blowing. It's like the prettiest color ever. So the whole thing that motivated me to try this and this being, you know, have this as my 
final touch to this look before I just reviewed the other three things is because I watch Hannah so much. Hannah always posts and she loves the Gucci lipsticks. She's like, I could have them in every color. Oh my gosh. And she really does talk so much about how the colors are so incredible. I believe her now. I'm a believer. Okay. Cause she's a red lip girl and even an orange rusty, whatever lip kind of girl. She can wear a lot of lip colors and I really can't, but this nails it. This nails it. It's just this side of dead. And I think on someone who had cooler undertones than me, it would look dead, but it is just my side of looking dead and I'm obsessed with it. It's so, so good. The thing I'm not obsessed with, I don't even mind the smell. I don't mind the smell. People were like, they're really, really fragrant. They're not that bad. They're certainly nowhere near as fragrant as the bronzer, but it doesn't have a taste. There's a taste. I didn't want anybody to buy this thinking that it's a perfect formula because I'm willing to look past it because I've never found a color this good in a formula this lovely that it just goes on so easily and it's just like done. I don't have to think of, I just wear it. You know what I mean? Like so much of the time I have to finesse everything that I put on my lips, like that's done. And I will get over the flavor. I don't care, you know, but it's still not a perfect product. I wanted to go ahead and swatch this real quick against the other shades that it is very, very similar to in my collection that happen to be different formulas, just in case you're wondering, like, do I need this or do I already have it in a formula I like better kind of thing. So this is like a greatest hits of lip colors and formulas in my collection, basically. Like this is my vibe right here. So we have here, the first one being Lorna Dune from Gucci, the one that I'm wearing right now. It's the only lipstick out of the bunch that is really actually this undertone. The other lipstick is, and this is just, this is gonna be kind of shocking if you're familiar with it. This is Stephanie from Thrive. Look how orange it looks against all of these. This has always been like the coolest beige I thought I could wear and it looks straight up honey colored compared to these on camera. So that is a really, really good comparison of exactly how bravely beige and almost gray this Lorna Dune color is. This one right here is Provoke from Hourglass, another gloss that I keep around because it's just such a difficult, undupable shade. You know, it's just so beautifully beige and cool. This right here is Nympho from NARS, which is a little bit rosier, definitely still really nice and neutral, not as like honey colored as Stephanie. And then down here we have my two babies that I have been comparing quite a bit lately. Right here, this is Bikini from Victoria Beckham, the new one. And then that right there, hard to see because it is the most sheer out of all of them. But that was Nana from Westman Atelier. So you can really see this fits right in with my comfort zone of what I feel like are the colors that are dialed in and look the best on my skin. But it's decidedly the most opaque and the only lipstick. You know, Stephanie is just, it's obviously not that color. It's Excellent. And it's actually really comfortable. It's a very, very comfortable lipstick. Super, super nice. Um, so yeah, that was like the crowning achievement of this. And as soon as I posted, I said, I think that I just found my perfect beige nude. And Dash sends me this gif where he's just like, he's like, you know, I'm still developing mine. I'm still working on it. And I'm like, yeah, don't worry. This is not what I would call a perfect lipstick because he said Lorna Dune. I was explaining to him what Lorna Dune was. He said, sounds like Laura Dern. I was like, look, I love Laura Dern, but Lorna Dune is actually like a shortbread cookie. And he's like, oh, so they basically named it Granny's Cookies. And I was like, yeah, and it's Granny's makeup scented too. You know, it's got that like, you know, old makeup kind of floral smell and flavor to it. And like, that just feels so unnecessary to me. Or why don't you just add something to the formula that makes it taste better? That's what you do with toothpaste. You know, you put something in there to make it taste better. It's just do it, man. It's just, I have this like perfumey kind of aura in my mouth that like State of Kate would throw the dang thing out the window. You know, I always think of her as like one pole of like what you're willing to put up with. She, like so many times we were talking to Ingram where she's like, well, Kate doesn't like, it. I'm like, Kate hates everything. <laughs> and it's always a good friend to have that friend who, when she makes a recommendation, you know, it's really, really airtight because she does not make exceptions. 
she hates everything. And when she really, really likes something, that really means something. So yeah, State of Kate would check this thing out the window. But the color to me is so uncommon in this formula. And it's so, Hannah, it's so light. It's so washed out. That's what's so great about she might already own this since this is her formula that she loves anyway. But like this is the most like grungy old gum kind of color. Let's compare it to old gum. This is just me waxing poetic about one color for half of the video. So if you are unfamiliar to the reference I'm making that is old gum, it is when you mix cocoa from Salt, New York with the white mixer to, you know, any degree really. And you can come out with this color that really looks a lot like when you find dried up bubble gum. It's just this kind of, let's try and make that a little more opaque, you know, not so spread out. I'll try and build it a little so you can really, really see the nuance of that color because it's, it's very interesting. It looks good on so many skin tones. And she was the one who discovered that if you take those two things, put it on your lips, it's like the most ideal lip color. So Hannah, the moment of truth. Lorna Dune might just be right up there with old gum. It's not as pink but that beige is just out of control. So there you have it, friends. We are just having ourselves a little color theory party over here talking about extremely washed out, dusty, dusty beiges. So hope that was valuable for you. So I'm gonna zoom you all out and we will, I will just quickly touch on the prices of these and I will give you my final thoughts on each one. So there are a lot of other formulas. These were just the ones that appealed to me because they're more like sheer and or they were colors that appealed to me or like just products that I reach for more. The Gucci bronzing powder is $62, okay? This is $62, wackadoodle, and you get 12 grams or 0.42 ounces. It's a lot of product but it's a lot of money and I'm not even going to quibble about like whether it's worth it or not. Like that's a lot of money for a bronzer. The Gucci Rouge à Lèvres Satin Lipstick is $42. That is a lot for a lipstick. That's a lot of money. This is the best color I've ever found. I have no regrets. The Gucci Palette Beauté de Year eyeshadow palette is $149. That is a lot of money for an eyeshadow palette. I'm a broken record. And we already talked about how the foundation is $68. So let me give you my final thoughts here one by one. Starting with the foundation. Who is this for? Probably not me. Because first of all, they say it's for different skin types than mine. All the skin types except dry. But there are 40 shades. I am able to make it work. Hi. But there are other things that I prefer. I really like the Fenty. If what I'm going for is a slightly higher coverage, like medium coverage, more satiny skin finish, a little bit more blurred, a little bit more photographable, I would rather have this and I would recommend this over it unless you're really, really into the idea of Gucci itself. The name, the presentation, the fragrance, the whole experience of putting it on, then go with the, go with the Gucci. I'm just gonna say it's a little bit more finicky, I guess, but it might be better on other skin types. <laughs> like I cannot speak to that. It might be a lot better on the skin types it's actually intended for. But if you have found in the past that you kind of relate to my needs and my wants as far as like skin type is concerned, you'd probably like this better. That's all. Unless you really just want to moisturize the living crap out of your skin. And it's probably going to take down wear time in that case, just because the two things are going to be fighting. So $68, this is just not something that I have reached for that often because of how hard it is for me to like get what I want out of it. But like today, I'm not mad. If this was the only foundation that I had, I would make it work until it was empty. I wouldn't like chuck it. <laughs> I just kind of medium on it, you know? And I think that being medium on a product that sells itself at this high of a price 
it's kind of, you know, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. That's all. The bronzer. You guys know, I have really sung the praises of this bronzer. I think that the presentation's gorgeous. For whatever reason, this is the packaging that like hits the hardest for me. It's wonderful. I think it's gorgeous. And they did do a bunch of other stuff in this colorway, but I, this is kind of the one thing that, I don't know, appealed to me. And I just think it's a really, really unique color for a bronzer. Maybe all of them aren't like this, but I like the rosy undertone here. I think it's really pretty. And I would recommend this. Just just understand that it's going to have more pigmentation. It's matte. So matte bronzers are always going to be a little more prone to stamping, but I love that it gave me such a blushy tone that I almost forgot to put blush on. That speaks pretty highly of a bronzer in terms of its like flexibility and efficacy because that means that it's carrying more than the sum of its parts basically. And for me, this is a really lovely experience and that is up to you whether you think that's a really lovely experience but like that is just it's like old hollywood glamour to me something about this it's just so nailing it down on luxury the resin top and everything i don't know man i think that the, this one this one really nails it for me just like across the board i'm not gonna say that you can't get a bronzer like this for less i just i like having it and i use it a lot this eyeshadow palette if you owned it, or if I, if this was my only eyeshadow palette, like you can get a lot of looks out of it, but there's a bit of a learning curve. And it's because these are such disparate shades. You've got like cool, cool, I would say that's a neutral brown and kind of a cool oystery beige. And then you have like this very, very warm red, this like shifting pink, this just ballerina pink, a very saturated white, a very saturated black. And then you have this weird blue purple that I don't know how I would wear that. Maybe if you just threw it on top of that red, it would be really cool. You could throw it on top of the black. The black is very sooty. And then the blues are wild. Like they are wild, wild, like take you straight to the sixties wild. And yeah, I want to do an entire look just using those, but that wouldn't have been a very good item. I wouldn't have sold the garment. You know what I mean? It's just not my look. All that to say, if it is a very unique story that appeals to you, like each of these kind of capsules, as I describe them, like appeals to you, then maybe this is worth $149 to you, especially because I wanna say they're going to make like replaceable pans and stuff like that for it. And I mean, you have to admit, even if that's not your aesthetic, you have to admit that like that's well executed. It's a very, very pretty, uncommon looking palette. This package is just gorgeous and it is actually all metal. The bronzer isn't. And I just, I do, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But like, if what you're looking for is like a more succinct and or contained version of one of those color stories, I would go with Aether. It's such a similar formula that blends more easily and more quickly. And finally, the lipstick. My thesis on all of these is none, none of these is a perfect product. None of these is like, oh my gosh, home run, run, do not walk. This is something that if you don't have this in your collection, I pity you. <laughs> I don't think there's anything like that. But my point is, it is seldom that I call something a very, very perfect product. And none of these, especially for their price point, is a perfect product. But this is a very perfect color for me. Wow. 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 It's beige old gum. It's just so easy. There are very few lip sticks, if really any, honestly, prior to this one, that I can quote unquote slap on. You know? I can slap it on. People are like, slap on a red lip. I'm like, no. Nah. I can't slap on a red anything, okay? Like, and it, there's just really, really very, very few lip colors that I feel like do me enough favors that they're worth wearing over something that's just clear. <laughs> because like, usually clear is better. <laughs> so the fact that this outweighs my desire to just wipe it off and put on something clear that says a lot. One of you guys actually pointed that out in my declutter. She said, it's kind of funny to watch you swatch and to keep all of these colors that you kind of admire based on their, their beauty, knowing that you're only going to put them on for like a moment, then wipe them off and put on a clear gloss in your video, which is so true. That is, that is someone who's been here a while and knows me. So I think that this deserves 
some very, very strong extra attention because I want to keep this on, even though it tastes kind of weird. <laughs> and I feel like I'm kind of breathing in the fragrance all the time, like through my mouth. It's not ideal, but beauty is pain. And I'm just kidding. I don't really think that, but I really like, I, I would, I, I'm excited to reach for it and reach for it and reach for it again. That's the power of a perfect color. So I will just, um, you know, suck on a mint or something and, you know, try and get this flavor out of my mouth. But oh my gosh, I'm in love with this whole look. And I kind of knew how it was going to turn out and I let it inspire what I wore. And then I let what I wore inspire how it turned out. And uh, I'm just a whole mood today, guys, a whole mood. I'm loving it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't like too long that I sat on all this Gucci stuff before really giving you guys a comprehensive review on it. But I did want to have a takeaway, not just like me, you know, and these required extra attention. And I'm glad I gave them the extra attention that they needed. So if you did find this valuable, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.